Hello everybody, welcome back to a very special edition of Ordinary Adventures. Is it special? I mean, it's the first time we've ever done a video like this, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of breaking news. Yesterday, yeah. Disney announced the Splash Mountain in Disney World and Disneyland is going to get rethemed after Princess and the Frog. Can you believe it? I'm like in shock. Yeah, let's, let's dive into this news. <laughs> Come with us on this adventure. <laughs> Read all about it. <laughs> oh, uh, looks like Splash Mountain is getting rethemed in both Disneyland in California and Magic Kingdom and Disney World. Princess and the Frog. I just can't believe that this is actually happening. And it seems like it's been in the works for a year or so. So it isn't like spur of the moment decision. Yeah, there was this petition that was going around online recently, picking up steam this past like couple weeks. People wanted Disney to retheme the Splash Mountain after Princess and the Frog. And it just so happens that Disney has apparently been working on this for a year. Yeah. You're gonna have to excuse me because I'm honestly still in shock. Like this news is fresh off the presses. And I love Splash Mountain. It's your favorite ride. It's literally my favorite ride. Why do you love Splash Mountain so much? Tell us that. I love the songs. I love all the little creatures. I love the thrill. Every time I go on that ride, I'm genuinely thrilled. Yeah. Like it's scary, it's exciting. Are you gonna get wet? Aren't you gonna get wet? So that aspect- You, you know, like the creepy fox? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, he's not my favorite character. I like like the little, what are they? Like the little prairie dog looking yeah. people. I don't know. So I'm happy it's getting a retheme because like the thrill and the the ride isn't gonna change besides the theming. It'll still be the same ride. The yeah. same thing. It's just different theming. So I'm slowly trying to come to terms with. And another thing, I haven't even seen Princess and the Frog. Well, let's get to that. Yeah, I'm I'm stepping ahead of myself. <laughs> First of all, let's let's back up for a second. If people don't know, Splash Mountain is an attraction in Disney World and Disneyland, and actually some international Disney parks as well. But those aren't changing as of yet. And the attraction is based on this 1946 live-action hybrid animation movie, Song of the South, which is kind of problematic. It's set in the post-Civil War South and has some depictions of. I don't know, stuff that we don't want to get into here, but uh, Disney has known this for years. Actually, they knew about this before they built the ride. Yeah. It, it has been locked in the vault. They did not put it on Disney Plus for a reason. Yeah. They're kind of ashamed of it, even though I think that they should put it out there and put some context, put like Leonard Maltin in front of it and like explain like some historical context and stuff like that. So this ride came out in the 80s, it became a huge hit. Yeah. An instant classic, some might say. Yeah. <laughs> but it's strange. So many people go on this ride and don't even know it's based on the movie. I'd say like 99% of the people that go on this ride have never seen the movie. Yeah. I I knew it was based on a movie. I've, I've never seen Song of the South. I don't, you know, there's no way to really access it, even if I wanted to see yeah. it. You have to go through the dark web. But yeah, I... <laughs> We're not going to go through the dark web <laughs> to watch that movie. Sorry. Yeah. Pretty much up until recently, I mean, I was just blissfully ignorant of that movie. Yeah. I just liked the characters. And kind of when this petition was going around, I was kind of a defender uh, when I was talking to people, being like, you know, but this ride, even though it's based in this movie that had some problematic things, this ride has no problematic parts to it. So like, why change the ride? The movie, I, I, I mean, I could see both ways, but I learned today, I didn't realize this, that the whole song Zippity Doodah, which won an Oscar for best original song and is one of the most beloved tunes in the Disney library. I didn't know this, but it's actually been influenced by the chorus of the pre-Civil War folk songs, yeah. which is considered very racist. That is just frankly not okay. Yeah, I love Zippity Doodah and it's like- Such a catchy song. Now I'm like in this <laughs> conundrum of like, do I still like that song? I don't know how to feel. Yeah. Okay, so they're updating this ride. They're putting Tiana, who is the first Disney princess of color, right? Mm -hmm. They describe her as modern, courageous, empowered woman who pursues her dreams and never loses sight of what's really important, 
It's a great story with a strong lead character. And they also say that the new concept is inclusive, one that all of our guests can connect with and be inspired by. And it speaks to the diversity of millions of people who visit the park each year. See, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I mean, like, right now, Splash Mountain was a cool ride, and I got to love those characters. Uh, maybe not through the movie, but through the ride itself. But here, people are going to be going into it now with a love of these characters. And, you know, even though I mean, <laughs> we're two white people here yeah. uh, talking about this, I can't imagine what it would be like growing up having all these Disney princesses and not seeing someone. <laughs> I'm going to cry. Yeah. It's just like, I know this is totally different, but it's just like watching Wonder Woman. Yeah. And like having the feelings. Sorry, I'm like actually <laughs> crying. The feelings I got, even though I didn't really love that movie as much as everyone else, I still got like chills. Like I have goosebumps right now. Just, <laughs> I don't know. It's just very cool and very awesome. Although I do think she deserves like her own ride. Th that I am in agreement with. Actually, let's look at the concept art. Wait, hold on. I'm still crying. <laughs> <laughs> How many videos has Kitra cried I know. in? My mom Let us know in the texted me below. and she's like, you cry a lot. I don't remember you crying so much. <laughs> well, thanks, mom. I'm just a very emotional person, okay? <laughs> okay, let's look at this concept art. So this is Splash Mountain reimagined on the outside. We're seeing the outside here. And you can see Tiana. She's sitting on the outside there. She's sitting on top of like party favors and fireworks yeah, Mardi for a Gras. Mardi Gras celebration. I wonder if that's actually... That's part of the ride. Because it's all leading up... We'll, we'll, we'll read in the plot synopsis in a second, but I think it mm -hmm. leads up to a like big Mardi Gras celebration at the end. Hmm. I'm just wondering if she's actually going to be sitting outside like that when you go by. I think so. Oh, yeah. And it looks like a swamp with like lily pads and stuff. Yeah. Right there is Lewis. He's a trumpet playing alligator with dreams of becoming a jazz musician. The logs look the same. <laughs> yeah. I kind of imagine that this ride is not going to be much different, right? In terms of like the ride system. Of course, it's going to be exactly the same. But they have to at least paint the logs, right? They're going to leave them like exactly the same. I don't know. I can imagine this is going to be like a really magical place at night. Oh, it's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. And you also see that big tree on the top there. That is... Mama Odie's tree. She lived up there in like that smash boat. Do you see that smash boat? Mm -hmm. yeah, with her snake juju, juju. So maybe maybe you'll see her up there. I don't know. I do love like the, I don't know what these trees are called, but like the classic like Louisiana. Like, like willow trees. Are or, they willow I, I trees? I don't know with, if that's like, the name of it. The moss like dripping down. Or you know, you guys yeah. can see what we're talking about Tell me here, here though. Is the briar patch the... Briar thorn patch, or what is it called? The yeah, the thorny briar patch. Is that removed here, or is that still there? It looks like there's still some kind of entanglement there. Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Good question. Let's talk about the movie real quick. Yeah. So, like as I said earlier, I have not seen the movie. I was actually gonna scramble and watch the movie right before recording this because it's not like I don't want to see the movie. It's just one of those Disney blind spots. You know, we'll that watch I have. it tonight. Yeah. I'm yeah. totally going to watch it, and I know I'm going to love it. I've seen Mickey and the Magical Map at Disneyland, and Tiana like has the finale with her song, and I freaking love that song. Yeah. Which song is that in that uh, Mickey and the Magical Map? You Gotta know? dig a little deeper. Oh, yeah. That's probably going to be like the song at the end of yeah, this ride, I'm assuming. Totally. So I'm I'm open, and I know, I know I'm going to love it. It's just one of those things that like I haven't seen. And I feel like so bad that I haven't seen it. Yeah, I have seen it. I was super excited to see it because this is kind of a return. It was a return to hand-drawn animation after years of Pixar turning, changing the game and making it all about computer animation. Yeah. And it was also a return to Disney's return to fairy tales and musicals. I don't think they did that since Aladdin or something. I don't know. It was a, a, a bunch a of years time. that they, they, yeah. they took off. So I was really excited about this, and there's also like you know it's set in New Orleans. There's the history of that with Disneyland, which I love. So I was excited to see this film, and I was kind of a little bit underwhelmed. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not gonna say I disliked it. I liked it. It's just I don't know. It, it didn't. It felt like it was trying too hard to be a Disney classic and not be its own thing. I don't know. I gotta re revisit. I've only seen it once, okay, so well, we're gonna have to revisit we're gonna watch it, tonight. it again. I remember particularly loving Doctor Doctor Facilier who's like the voodoo kind of bad guy. Yeah, I've seen him around. I've seen him at the Halloween party. So yeah. he seems like a 
a cool dude. Yeah. And so I'm excited for him. But. I think the reason why they went with Princess and the Frog is it's adjacent to New Orleans yeah. Square in Disneyland. So it just makes sense within Disneyland. Disney World, on the other hand, I don't... Where's Splash Mountain in Disney World? It's in, like, Frontierland. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense, but it's okay. Okay. Let's talk about the story really quick here. Here's a quote. We pick up this story after the final kiss. Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler alert. She's a frog and turns into a princess. She's a frog? Or wait, no, she's... I thought he was a frog. <laughs> let, me, let me do that again. Let's do that again. <laughs> the quote here is, we pick up the story after the final kiss and join Princess Tiana and Louis on a musical adventure featuring Ooh. some of the powerful music from the film as they prepare for the first ever Mardi Gras performance. Let's dissect that for a second. This is a sequel set after the events of the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you spoil it, honestly. It doesn't, I'm not. But I mean, there's no frogs in, in this. If there's, if this is a sequel, everybody, they're human, right? Okay. So I, I, I guess there's that. And, but they're playing the same songs from the movie? Well, I mean, it's their classics. They gotta like, <laughs> get ready for the Mardi Gras performance. Does this mean my favorite character, the doctor, is not going to be in this? I think he has to be in it. And I think the moment that we're going to see him is right before the big drop. So it's going to be like, that's kind of how it is in Splash Mountain. It like gets kind of dark and spooky and then... You're totally right over. about that. So he's going to be like... I haven't seen the movie, so I'm not sure. But he's going to be doing like his voodoo stuff. That's yeah. what he is, right? Yeah. Wow. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. So he's gonna be doing his. He's I've gonna be it. doing his dark magic, and then you're gonna plummet. Do you think he'll like? There'll be an Easter egg where he says "zippity doo da" or something like that. I feel like they could. I feel like but then they is that problematic? Yeah, I feel I like zippity doo da's yeah. erased. I, I, but I bet there will be some other kind of Easter egg because there always is in these Disney rides. So I'm assuming the big show scene at the end with that boat, that riverboat, is gonna be like the Mardi Gras celebration. So good news, the riverboat is staying. <laughs> They're just going to change everything else. And it looks like all the original voice talent is returning because they have quotes in this article here. That's cool. The music from the film is going to be here. I wonder if they're going to have any original new music for the ride. I don't know. That'd be cool if they did. In the movie, Tiana wants to own a restaurant. That's mm -hmm. her goal. She's saving up to own a restaurant. And at the end, she gets her own restaurant. And she like makes these beignets. And uh, I read online, I wanted to reiterate this because I saw uh, Katie from Best Life, one of her friends. She suggested that they pump the smell of beignets in the final show scene. Oh, Katie, that is an <laughs> awesome idea. I'm all about them pumping in smells. Yeah. Can you imagine? I like rides with smells. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. What other rides have smells? Like there's Figment, right? Soren. Oh yeah, Soren. What does Figment have? A fart smell. <laughs> Is it fart or root beer? Or, or a something? skunk. Skunk. Oh, skunk. Yeah. yeah, skunk. That's what it is. You Anyways. love that skunk. You love that skunk. <laughs> <laughs> what worries me here is the thing I love about this ride, other than that very catchy song, mm -hmm. is I love my robots. I love my animatronics, and this ride has so many animatronics. I'm just hoping that Disney does not replace a lot of these things with screens. Because I don't want screens, I want my robots. <laughs> you know you I mean? want your robots. I want my animal robots. Well, the characters that are in there now, <laughs> aren't they rethemed from America Sings? Yeah, the ones on the, the boat, I think. Oh, yeah. only the ones on I the think, boat? I think so. So they could do it again, is what I'm saying. Don't get rid of the robots. That's one of the things why I love Splash Mountain so much, is it's so, like, everything is practical. You know what I mean? Yeah. No screens, Disney. Yeah. Please. Don't do it. You, okay, you could throw in maybe like one screen, but that's it. <laughs> Everything else. Yeah. Just make it dark and put a bunch of fireflies in there. We'll be happy. <gasps> fireflies in the dark. That'd be cool. Yeah, because isn't one of the characters like a firefly? Yeah. Whatever you do, do not give us 3D glasses. Yeah. And, no, and don't take away our robots. Do not give us 3D glasses. I'll be happy. I don't think you could have 3D glasses on a water ride. That doesn't work. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. What is the name of this ride going to be? Because they did not announce a name of this ride. Good question. Is it, it going to be like a, like Universal Studios? They have like <laughs> this Hagridge recent history. Yeah, they have this recent history of having these long 
titles like Hagrid's magical creature motorbike adventure. Is that what yeah. it's called? So it's yeah. gonna be like the Princess and the Frog yeah. ride down to Mardi Gras celebration. Yeah, so that's a good question. What is it like called Princess Tiana something, or is it called Princess and the Frog something, or is it called? I mean, the whole plot of the ride is she's preparing for Mardi Gras. To perform. Like so is per- it something like is Mardi Gras or like Tiana's epic performance adventure? <laughs> I mean, that's an awful name, <laughs> but is it still gonna have mountain in the title? Because I feel like that's. By the way, do you know that Splash Mountain, why it was called Splash Mountain? Yeah, because they were going to base it on the movie Splash. Yeah. And then... Michael they... Eisner was such a genius. I mean, Splash <laughs> Mountain is such an iconic name that, yeah. like, I don't even care. Like... I'm guessing it's going to be called Princess and the Frog, colon, Splash... Or Princess and the Frog, Splash Marty, Mountain, or Tiana's... Marty Gla- Mardi Gras Splashdown. Maybe it's Tiana's Splash Mountain? I feel like it's going to be Tiana something. Brian Lynch, who's a friend of mine, he's the guy that wrote some of the the Secret Life of the Pets movies, uh, the Minion movie, uh, some of the Despicable Me movies. He tweeted out that uh, as a joke, he tweeted out that he wants it to be called The Princess and the Log. <laughs> That's good. That's actually really good. Because from this concept art, you know that they're keeping those logs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so who's involved here? Charita Carter is the senior creative producer leading the project at Walt Disney Imagineering. Now, first of all, she's a black woman. Uh, She worked her way up in Imagineering. She was like one of the two heads of Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail. Oh, wow, awesome. And y'all know how much I love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Yeah. If you guys don't know, check out our video when we went because I have some like high praise that I feel nobody called me out on. I was honestly (laughs) shocked. What if they use some of the projection technology? I'm okay with projection, I'm not okay with screens. So if they wanna do some cool projections, go for it, that'd be awesome. And I know Scott Trowbridge mentioned that he's working on it. Scott Scott Trowbridge is the guy that did the Spider-Man attraction in Islands Adventure, which is amazing. And he was the guy in charge of Galaxy's Edge, which you know we love. So So I'm not sure how he's involved in it, if he's just over, like, more of an overseeing role or not, but... That still makes me happy because Scott is the man. Uh, Tony Baxter is an, an, an advisor, so I'm not sure what that means, but he's the guy that made this ride, made some of our favorite rides. Yeah, Tony Baxter is a legend. He has made all of the best rides in Disney. By the way, when we were at 80s night, we had the opportunity to get our photos with some of the characters from Splash Mountain. It now occurs to me that that was probably a limited time photo op that will never happen again. And aren't you happy that I made you wait? You wanted to leave. I made you wait at one point. But we ended up waiting, we got our photos, and I, I'm i happy now. That, I mean, not that I wasn't happy before, but now it's like, at least I have that memory. Okay, let's talk about what does this do for the land? And we're more Disneyland people, so we're gonna talk about that, not Disney World. In this press release, it says, set against the backdrop of New Orleans in Louisiana Bayou, in 1966, Walt Disney himself opened New Orleans Square when it became the first new land added to Disneyland Park. So it feels natural to link the story and the incredible music of the Princess and the Frog to our parks. Mm-hmm. My question is, is this going to still be set in Critter Country? No. Or is it now going to be part of... It's going to be... It has to be part of New Orleans Square. So I guess that means now Critter Country only has one ride, one restaurant, one store, and one meeting greet location? Yeah, so it has Winnie the Pooh, it has Hungry Bear Restaurant, and then it has Pooh's Corner, which is the candy store. Yeah. Does it have a meet and greet? Oh yeah, and then I guess you meet Winnie the Pooh too. Yeah. So hear me out. I have two things that I think they should do to this area. Okay. One, don't call it Critter Country anymore, just change it to Bear Country or something. Why not call it, um... The Hundred Acre Wood and retheme. Oh yeah, or yeah, or just go full Winnie the Pooh, but my second idea, I don't think is ever gonna happen, but what is it? I think you might like this idea. Get rid of Critter Country altogether and expand Galaxy's Edge. Put in a third ride, put in a slow dark ride, all about Ewoks, all about Porgs. (laughs) The things that the people want. You want your Ewok dark ride. Yeah. So it doesn't even have to be you. I'll take anything. But just use that plot of land for more Galaxy's Edge, which I don't 
think they're going to do, at least not anytime soon. But and that makes sense, too, because it's on the outskirts of Black Spire Outpost. So it could be like in the woods and you're taking this like magical boat. You get to see all these Star Wars creatures and stuff. I should be an Imagineer. Yeah. The ideas that I have on this <laughs> channel. Well, can this ride fit into Critter Country? Because there are critters in it. Like there's Lewis and there's the frogs and there's... Yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what they're gonna do? It makes more sense that it's Louis, that it's New Orleans, yeah. but I just want to credit my friend Brian Young was the one that came up with the idea of changing Critter Country to Hunger uh, Hundred Acre Wood. Here's another idea I had: What if you, Tiana, wanted to own a restaurant? Mm -hmm. What if you retheme Hungry Bear into Tiana's place? But the only problem with the the restaurant is. I think in the movie, all I remember her making were beignets. And you already have beignets being made yeah. over at, what, the Medjula Bar or whatever yeah. this place is called. That's all she made in her restaurant? I don't know. I would have to go back. I have not seen the movie since it came out, so I don't remember. I'm sure she made other things, but I remember the beignets being a big thing. So when will this rethemed ride debut? The press release says conceptual design work is well underway and Imagineers will soon be able to conduct preliminary reviews and develop a timeline for when the transformation can start to take shape. What that sounds to me like, they have a bunch of concept art, they might have a model, they mm -hmm. have not started build, building animatronics or mm -hmm. anything. So I'm guessing we're at least a year out, if not two years. Yeah, that sounds that sounds right. What are your thoughts on re-themes of rides in the past? I feel like I really, really loved Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. and I. By the way, when that was first announced, I was so against it. I was like, I love Guardians of the Galaxy, but I was like, give them their own ride. Yeah, it was. Twilight Zone Tower of Terror is like one of my favorite rides. This is a travesty. Like I'm seeing some people online going bananas over this announcement. I understand yeah. like you love Splash Mountain so much. So I, like I understand there's that attachment there. There's mm -hmm. nostalgia. You've falling in love with the ride the way it is. And now like, I finally understand what the Tower of Terror people were going through. <laughs> this is a completely different scenario. Yeah. I understand why this ride yeah. has to be changed. The technology that the Disney Imagineers are using now, like we could see in Galaxy's Edge, it just gives me hope that like this ride, they're just gonna make it the best that they can. Yeah, have you like, seen like the recent animatronics for like the Beauty and the Beast ride that they're building in, what is that, Tokyo Disney Sea, I think? Mm -hmm. They look incredible. If they can yeah, bring the that. characters from Princess and the Frog to life in that way. Yeah, imagine the possibility. So that's got me excited. Cause like, I, I'm i a firm believer that Disneyland is always changing. And if things are updated in a cool way, like the technology is updated, I feel like I'm all for that. Yeah. Last time we had a video adventure in New Orleans Square, we did Haunted Mansion Holiday. We did a whole video on that. We'll put a link to that right over there. Wow, that was the last time we were, had a video about it? Yeah, I don't think Haunted Mansion has opened up since then. Yeah, crazy. Anyways, check it out. It was so much fun. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll, we'll see, see you on, on the, the next, next adventure. adventure.